right. Um, I'll check in a little bit. I'm on a radio right now. Uh, <laughs> He's on the phone. <laughs> hey, can I call you back? I'm on talking tunes at the moment. <laughs> oh, sorry. It must okay, be something Give me important. your phone. All right, thanks, man. Give me your phone. <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. You got a compass on your wrist? You got to figure out which direction you're going in or what? <laughs> Don't mess with me, man. <laughs> Is that, oh, is that a knife? A ninja tool. It's a survival. <laughs> oh my God. It's a survival. I could have used this in out of control days. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Where's it's that been? No. It's, a, it's a survival bracelet. It's a rope. It's a whistle. It says fire. It's, Maybe we should talk compass. about Greg's ninja tool first before we turn him off to John. This is a rape whistle, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's me. I got to make sure. Nobody tries right, to rape talking me. dudes has already started as far as I've been concerned. I'm going right here. You got Greg and his rape whistle and his uh, <laughs> tool. Yeah, so he used to be the G-Man. Now he's, he's uh, he needs his protection since he's wearing his little band of band his nuts. Don't mess with me, man. He's, he's vulnerable right now. I can see why you need that. I know crazy. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you see the headlines now. Yeah, the headlines now. The G Man is in the house. We got, we got Kathy Eckery in the house tonight. Bam Bam. I'm going to call you Bam Bam. I'm sorry. You know, that, yeah, I like that actually. It's kind of fun. Really Hi, Bam Bam. Bam. You, know, you hate it. Oh, no. That's you know, cool. You I like it. I like now, it. Now, Kathy and I go back for, God, how many years now? When you were out of control? Yeah, how many when years I first was that? turned out of control. I met you at Papa Top. Yeah. We, wherever we went into Papa Top. When I knew Kathy there. before I knew your husband yeah. there. Yeah, so that was years ago. And then, of course, we got uh, the beautiful and ever-talented John Van Wyck. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I got to be real careful. Got careful with this microphone because the condom keeps slipping off here. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> those, those condoms yeah. never do what they're supposed to. <laughs> it's an extra large. <laughs> and, of course, don't you have that problem all the time? <laughs> <laughs> Slipping off. Yeah. <laughs> like Stop the buying the magnums, John. You don't need them. There's a story of that house over on uh, Sanford and Southern. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say to you right now about. I don't know if we should leave or just, you know. No, no. We, we, we got to keep Britta here. Britta, Britta's used to this stuff. You, should, yeah. you used to work with JoJo Gerard, who I'm going to be interviewing to also. Yes. And Sunny FM. Yes. And I'm also going to be talking with Jim Biggins when he makes it down. He's over in okay. Saginaw now, I guess, okay. somewhere. And then, you, do you remember Mark Frost? I never worked with Mark Frost. I yeah. remember of him, lucky. but I never worked no, with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mark, Mark Brookie, he's actually doing writing in one of the papers over in Grand Haven or something now, but he okay. was over there. He used to do that classic rock show. Okay. You remember right. that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was always a thing that you always had fun doing if you did. I, when I did it one time, it was Woodstock, and I found out years later that I misquoted everything. <laughs> but, <laughs> nobody called, nobody, nobody cared. Called. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you've been in radio for 100 years yourself. Yes, I have. Seems like it anyway. No, it has it, No, it has literally well, been 100 you, years. You didn't start now. See, I listened to you and, and Jim Cox and Kathy this morning, and you yeah. didn't start with the records, though, did you? The playing records? Re yeah, playing records. Vinyl. I did, actually. Really? I, I did. Uh, well, really? not many. It, by that time, most of the music was on carts. Yeah. It was on. It was before CDs, though. Yeah. It was before CDs. It was before the computers. Everything was either on reel to reel or cart, oh, yeah. or cart, yeah. and all those reels to reels with the the blades and the tape and oh, those oh, yeah. were so much fun. Yeah, editing. That house. was when editing was fun. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh my that God. Was <laughs> yeah, that was back in the good old days. <laughs> but now people that don't know what carts are, those are look like eight tracks, yeah. but they're only two tracks instead yep. of eight. And they're so. like, what's an eight track? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true. What's a VHS? <laughs> that's true. What's a, what's a record? <laughs> <laughs> but hey, the, the the art of when you first were were DJing with records is you had to have the back cue, so you had yes. to cue properly. So yes. when they started, mm -hmm. they were right there. Yep. Yeah, anyway, I'm just reminiscing, that's all. <laughs> but, uh, John, you've got something that you wanted to share with everybody as far as uh, something that's uh, well, one of the, we're trying one of the to do Well, one of the things that I've been, been uh, working on, and actually it started at uh, our reunion of, of Talking Tunes back last summer. Yeah. And we, a bunch of us got together over at Papa Tops, and we were reminiscing and showing pictures. and a lot of things, things happen that, at Papa Top, don't well, they? Well, we went, I mean, you know, the back story is we went to Papa Tops because we thought we still had some trade left there from 20 years ago. <laughs> 
You asked me, so where should we meet? And I said, you know, we used to have all of our staff meetings at uh, Eagle 97 over there when Bob Bolton and Bob Bolton, all, they worked for trade. Every, pretty much everything yeah, yeah. at that radio station well, was, was trade. His, I was his number one trade guy. <laughs> and, and so yeah. we would go to Papa Tops and the Sandbar and a couple other places in that neighborhood where that studio was. And so I figured I'd we'd go over there and ask Tammy if we still had trade left. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When I left there and went to GVU, I realized that I lost like ten thousand dollars a year in trade. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. That was one of those. You want to work demoted? You want to work? You want to work this overtime? Overtime this weekend? We got some new snow tires. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The girl Firestone, downtown Muskegon, we always got the Firestone. Yeah. Yeah, Greg would go out and get a case of oil. Oh. <laughs> what are you going to use that for? He said, I don't know. And some donuts. He said, I've got a quick oh, donuts. <laughs> and some donuts. <laughs> but anyway, last summer when we were sitting around at Papa Tops, uh, we were starting talking about radio in Muskegon and people that everybody had worked with over the years and, and my history of radio. Of the, my Uncle Raul was program director at uh, WKBZ right. back in the 1930s. And my another uncle Uncle Paul was the head chief engineer there for 30 years. And so I have a history of, of radio in Muskegon. It was kind of in my blood. We all started talking about that, saying, you know, we need to preserve this somewhere because, you know, we're all getting a little older. And, and, and the guys that, that, and, the, and the people that preceded us back yeah. in the 1930s, 40s are gone. Mm -hmm. And but there are still some people around that still remember working uh, with those with those folks back in the at least in the 40s anyway. So we, we got the idea. And so I said, OK, I'm going to give uh, um, the Lakeshore Museum Center a call. So I gave Anishka Soler a call, who's the, uh, the president of uh, that. And I said, we'd, we'd really like to sit down and talk, maybe doing something with the history of radio in Muskegon, because significant of uh, things that have happened that radio has followed. I mean, everything from the old Occidental Hotel fire of the 1930s and right. and, and Seaway Festival and, and uh, those kinds of things that happened in Muskegon that really shaped Muskegon. And if it wasn't for radio, Boy, what you know, it would have been a big void there. And it went back when news, we had news directors and those kinds of things and covering uh, lots of different things that happened in Muskegon. So anyway, we, we got a, a kind of a committee together and, and uh, of, uh, Oscar uh, came uh, with uh, Randy Crow and myself and uh, Steve, uh, Steve Harvey. Steve James. Steve, 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 Steve Harvey, Leonard, whatever, yeah, whatever, whatever name he's Harvey, going by today. Yeah. Uh, Leonard Harvey. And we set up a meeting back in the September time frame and we sat down with Anishka and uh, her curator and her archivist and, and a whole bunch of other people from the museum. I don't know what their titles were. Now, when we sat around and, and I said, I said to, to open up the meeting, I said, I want to thank her for having us in. And I said, you got to remember everybody, all the guys from the radio are all A personalities and, mm -hmm. and we can, we have to limit ourselves to 90 seconds every time we talk. <laughs> I said, or else we're going to be here for like two days <laughs> talk, talking about stories. And and one of the stories that came out, and we got the, really their interest, uh, was all the guys that used to work at WMUS over the years started talking about Mother Maddie Davis. Right. And uh, Maddie Davis is something that I didn't know that much about. I'd heard her name here and there, but didn't realize how significant that Maddie Davis was in the history of radio in Muskegon. Mm -hmm. That uh, you know, in 1947, uh, yeah. 1947, here's a 21, 22-year-old African-American woman that weighed about 90 pounds and wanders into the uh, WMUS studio and says, I want to do a radio program on Sunday mornings. But after going to WKBZ and they Went to WKBZ to, too, but they were doing yeah. the Berean Church right. and whatever whatever um, you know uh, Christian Reformed Church that they were broadcasting at yeah. the time. Um, but then they were, they were they sold out, and it was big money yeah. for back then. And so she went and she said, um, I'd like to do this. And they, she said, I'd like to do a 15-minute program. And they said, well, you need to go out and sell your own advertising. She said, I already got it sold. Yeah. And they said, well, go ahead and start it. And for when she started in 1947, for 2,741 consecutive Sundays, 41 years, she did a Sunday morning program on WMUS and, and did a gospel program and started gospel groups. And if, if you talk to a lot of African Americans who were raised in this community, and Greg, Greg would, would, would well, will vouch for this, uh, and I talked to Paul Billings one day and I said, you ever heard of Mother Maddie Davis? And he said, are you kidding me? I grew up with Mother Maddie Davis. Yeah. And so every, every, every kid, well, that, every African American kid in this town that grew up in Muskegon knew Mother Maddie Davis. Everybody in, at MUS too. That, oh yeah. 
Yeah. Tim um, told me a story about when he was 16 years old and he had to break in, break the window at MUS to get in to do the Matty Davis show live because <laughs> he forgot his keys. So, And then, you know, Chris Roberts, we saw over at the... Uh, the lunch thing that we did, I mean, he used to run Matty Davis, Leonard used to run Matty Davis, I used to run Matty Davis in 1990 when I was over there. There you go. Yeah, yeah. so I mean... It, so yeah. it's a significant person in history of Muskegon. History of radio, yes, but the history of Muskegon. And I think we got their attention at the Lakeshore Museum Center uh, because Anishka has called me several times. She actually made a presentation back in December to a, a, a regional organization that she belongs to. And, and the subject of her presentation was people that I didn't know before I got this job and they were significant to the history of my town. Right. And she did that and, and she got standing ovation and doing a thing on Mother Maddie Davis. And, and, and so it, 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 we got their attention. So what we decided to do is, uh, this is about a three year project with the, with the um, Lakeshore Museum Center. They, they take a while to, we had to collect things and uh, Oscar is doing some videotaping uh, it's right now. It's gonna take me three years to get Tim Akerhoff to be happy with his video, I can tell you that. Well, well, there you go. Yeah, we'll take that long. <laughs> And we don't really know what we're going to do with it yet, other than we're starting to collect, if anybody out there that's listening, had anybody that was involved with radio over the years, and you've got this piece of equipment, you don't know really what it is, and it's been sitting in your basement or your garage, but you know it came out of a radio studio. Uh, it may have a lot of tubes in the back of it, whatever it might be. You need to get a hold of us. And uh, we're, Randy Crow has got a, a section of one of his uh, warehouses that we've been collecting things and, and putting that. I just obtained a wire recorder yeah. from the 1947. It's actually 1947. I've never seen one. I remember Cliff Cliff Martin talking about one, but I'd never seen one before. Yeah, and so we we you know we're gonna we're gonna put together, and again, it's gonna take two to years anyway before we really know where that's going to be. Whether yeah. it's going to be at the Lakeshore Museum Center on Third and Clay, or whether now that they've uh, combined with the Heritage Museum on Western Avenue, that's all under one umbrella. Uh, I, I think they've signed the papers the last couple of weeks to do that, and and I've been talking to Anishka about possibility of doing that studio and it'll make it look like a studio but do it at the Heritage Museum on Western Avenue ground floor with a, with the by, the way by the window so if during festivals whether it's Rebel Road or bike time or whether it's some event that's going on on Western Avenue anybody can use that, that studio and just book it like it's a room cool. and you know nowadays you know to do a remote broadcast it just takes a phone line basically yeah, and or a, a cell phone and it's funny that you we say that too because uh, Don Anderson I, I, I transferred who's another big name in radio he's here TRU days um, he did a video of uh, when he used to have his, his place in South Haven. Okay. And he, people used to pay to come in there to get on the mic to record something on, on, on cassette tape, you know, and then give them, give them the Well, the you know, so. I don't know if, I mean, I got the idea for that. Um, I was down in Chicago not too long ago and walking down Michigan Avenue, walked by the Tribune building and I went, WGN studio is still right there. Yeah. You know, and WGN, obviously, the, the big voice of the Midwest, uh, 720 out of uh, out of Chicago. I mean, I walked in, I just, I stood there and watched the guys do their regular broadcast from that studio yeah. that's right, glassed in studio wow. on yeah. the main floor of the Tribune building. And I'm going, that that's where our museum uh, piece should be, yeah, and make it look like a make it make it look like a and some some antique stuff that we can we can acquire. Uh, I'm in the process. I, I found a couple of old uh, 28 teletypes uh, oh, that I'm going to have. Uh, they weigh about a thousand pounds a piece. You know, from from the days of uh, you know that the people who worked in worked the studio. They Rip called the wire, and read. Man. You know that yeah. that's where the, all the news came in, the weather yeah. came in, everything else was on a teletype. Oh, yeah. And so we're going to have a couple of those there. That I, I hate that. I hated that job. KBZ. <laughs> Ripping, ripping the wire and, and make sure finding out what stories were good and which oh geez anyway but you know of all, all the great things and the stories that we're trying to capture right now on, on video with people that have done radio uh, in the in the modern day yeah. um, but all the things that the stories that we are going to get from people who didn't work in radio and they went well, I got engaged at the Getty Four listening to so-and-so on the radio. Or, I, mean, I mean, those kind of... And that's that probably one of the cleanest stories you can Wait, say about the oh, Getty yeah. Four. <laughs> <laughs> probably, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> no, but there are those kind of those stories. There's a lot of, of when, perverts when, out there too that we could talk about, but we won't bring that up right now. No, no. no we'll leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, and 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 the great moments of radio. We're gonna try. I've got a whole box of stuff from the Talking uh, Tunes program. Yeah, uh, the cassette transfer. tapes when we oh, used yeah. to do it on cassette tapes, and I'm gonna look through there. We're gonna have to go through there, Oscar, and figure out if we can uh, find a couple of those broadcasts yeah. that, it, it that were we, memorable. Worst comes that we to worst, we probably won't be able to play on. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, oh, yeah. So that, oh you mean some of the Bob stuff? Yeah, some of the Bob stuff and and uh, <laughs> yeah. inter the interview yeah, with the uh, Goose, Goose uh, Lake down there, whatever it was down in Union, Michigan. And, oh yeah, yeah. And those kind of broadcasts yeah. that probably shouldn't play in, in today. It would probably scare some I think, children. I think this year, though, when we, we find out about Turtle Lake, if we can ever find out who Turtle runs Lake. Turtle Lake Nudist Camp, we should send Britta down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the, whoever that salesman was. Remember that salesman? That salesman went oh, down to, to Nude Stock. Yeah, Renee. Yeah, Renee. Yeah, Renee. Oscar. Yeah. Renee. Greg wants to do that. Greg, well, no, and, well, Greg didn't want to do it last <laughs> time. And doing that program, <laughs> he saw him. He one, didn't one of the it. best parts about some of those things were just the background laughter. Oh, yeah. That were in those things because <laughs> when Renee went down there, to, it was Turtle Creek. Is that what the yeah, name Turtle, 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 Turtle Creek. They had a thing called Nude Stock Turtle, every year, Turtle and Resort. they had a rock and roll concert at a nudist colony. Yeah, I had a contest. Yeah. For and that. Renee, Do Renee's you? down there. Yeah. Great, Renee calls us on Saturday morning from down there, and he says. Man, there's a lot of a lot of vendors here, and pretty much they're all selling sunglasses. <laughs> so this doesn't look like the, the, the Playboy Mansion. No, 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 no. So no. 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 no more like the Playboy garage. Yeah. I think their their biggest <laughs> these are, these are like biggest those nudist, sales item is towels. Yeah, so, yeah, these are like these nudist beaches, <laughs> clothing optional beaches in the grill, Jamaica, <laughs> and not and not at sandals. <laughs> now, Kathy found the information on that, so she, we, we can uh, yeah. we can set, set that whole thing up. But That's the thing about it is, happen. with Kathy, you know, if she calls and Nikki Hoffman answers the phone, Ooh, hang up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she was like eighty when we talked to twenty oh, years ago. If she if she, she anything to do with it, right. <laughs> if she picks up the phone, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I'm on my fourth husband now. Yeah, there were some some great things. Uh, Greg opening Kansas Spam as well. Oh, I, mean, I mean, there's nothing like nothing live radio better. and and a can of Spam opening up and being put on a grill. <laughs> the sound and the smell of that. There's nothing like napalm in the morning. <laughs> you know, the worst thing with Renee did. Renee, remember he made the chili out of Spam, and that was well, wait, well we had good. we had a Spam chili cookoff yeah. on, on Lakeside. That would be that, that, Hawaiians can't be wrong. Okay, that's yeah, right. right. Hey, hey. Well, it's it's hard to keep things. Uh, how many overweight Hawaiians do you know? <laughs> Spam works for the Samoans. Spam is big in Hawaii. And so is high blood pressure. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I can name some names. We don't even go there. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, so anyway, how do they get a hold of you if they want to get part uh, probably, of Probably uh, the, the, the best thing to do, I mean, I can give my phone number out over the air because I get weird calls all the time anyway. So 231-557-3979. Uh, probably the best way to do that. Uh, I've got uh, email. You can find me on Facebook. It's a V A N W Y C K. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you get that one. misspelled most of the time. Yeah. But you can do that on mess, message me on Facebook. What is that phone number again? Two three one. Yeah. Five five seven three nine seven. Carol Merrill over here. <laughs> three nine five seven. What is that phone number again, please, Greg? <laughs> three well, John, nine seven. Yeah, John. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's that's fine, yeah, but uh, and obviously get a hold of somebody here and and we, but pretty much we're getting most of the broadcasters around the Muskegon are in tune with uh, yeah. Dr. Rich Berry a couple of days ago and and uh, over at uh, whatever that company Cumulus. is going Cumulus. Uh, it's, <laughs> oh, yeah, we, <laughs> whatever that company you know, is over yeah. there, you know, yeah. Right. Yeah. another big one, yeah. not, not yeah. Art, the other one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love to watch Britta's face <laughs> talking about this. You know, everybody, oh, the background. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
It's the crush going out again. I'm telling you, it's like this morning with Jim Cox. They had the crush. No, but pretty much everybody that's doing broadcasting now is as well as as, uh, community radio here and and, uh, Shoreline uh, Radio. uh, Pretty much know that if you have a question and somebody says, hey, I got this piece of equipment, or or, or it's us out in the community as well, and you're talking to somebody you know that was involved with broadcasting and saying, hey, all that equipment used to, what what happened to all that stuff that came out of uh, 97? Mark knows now, but he'll tell. I think he probably will. Well, one, one of the interesting things that I did when I was still working at the phone company, I was a member of the Michigan Association of Broadcasters. I did go to, when they opened up the radio history uh, exhibit at the Michigan Museum in Lansing. Yeah. And we had a big opening reception and everything else. And I was walking by there and they had a WGN studio, or uh, what's the one, in, in the, uh, WJR. Okay. A WJR studio that they had re, uh, they, they had to have things made even to make it look like the studio. And I walked by there and I said, Wow, that's a board we're still using at 98.3. <laughs> With the big dials on it. Yeah, those were impressive. That was, that was a piece of antique uh, broadcast equipment. Yeah. But yeah, that, well, some of that I stuff's got to be around somewhere because it, that's the kind of stuff that, I mean, I mean, Cliff Martin never threw out anything. No. I mean, I mean people that worked in, in radio, time. especially the engineers. I mean, yeah. the engineers are the ones that, that always took mm-hmm. stuff home because they were afraid they weren't going to be yeah. able to find that part. <laughs> yeah. You know, weren't they? Right. Yeah, well, they, all, they all tell you they've yeah. got probably boxes of, of uh, vacuum tubes. Hey, there might be some stuff at the old, remember the old MUS studio out Ups- on Giles upstairs. Road? Giles Road upstairs, yeah. Uh, yeah. Upstairs. we got to figure yeah, out a way to sneak saying. in there. We're going we're gonna to get uh, Britta in, in black clothes, and she's going to sneak right in there. Here. There I you live, go. I could walk there from my house all right. in black clothes. Well, there and, you like, go. Be a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> ninja there. There you ninja Britta. probably let us in. Sneak in. Yeah, I could do that. I could yeah. walk from my house there. Better. That'll work. The X Factor. The <laughs> <laughs> X Factor. A little red wagon. <laughs> a little red wagon. A little red wagon. A little radio flyer. You can put all her stuff in there. You know, Britta's going to look like Catwoman. Okay. Britta, <laughs> this is, like I call her, the golden goddess of the radio. She'll put, yeah. Yeah. She'll put little whiskers on yeah. her. Yeah. She'll put little whiskers on her. She'll be all set. Oh, man. No, that's fun stuff. Ugly. It really is. <laughs> But we also got to get, if you ever see, you see Mark again. I mean, he lives in my, my town these days, so I might run into him. But he he was talking to me about uh, him and Pam getting together to do one of these videos, too. Oh, cool. And yeah, that would and be they awesome. Show. Oh, no. They, they were show. together for 20 years. Oh, yeah. A long yeah. time. Yeah, Mark yeah. uh, spent 31 years at, at MUS. At MUS, so. yeah. yeah. So. And, uh, good, yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm going to see him next week. So Yeah. So, and Mike Murphy, I'd be nice yeah. to get old of him. Yeah. I haven't seen yeah. him. What is Mike Murphy doing now? I don't know. Nobody don't seems know. to know. <laughs> he's caught. Dan Vandermine, I know he still announces the uh, Mona Shores games. I love it, Dan yeah. Vandermine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I get him, him, too. I mean, Dan's got some stories. He can make a few up, too. So. <laughs> well, yeah, <true. laughs> can, I, can I ask a question? Sure. So, so last Friday, I had the privilege of... This isn't uh, the Jim Cox show. You can ask whatever you want. <laughs> okay. All right. Back to you, Kathy. <laughs> you back, back to you, Kathy. Thank this you, is Jump in. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so last Friday, I had the privilege of having lunch with, with you guys oh, and uh, Chris Roberts. And I, yeah. I met and all these voices. I'm surrounded by these voices from my past, from my teenage years. <laughs> listening to non-stop you know it was just so cool you have a great radio voice you know and uh and even jim cox when i'm sitting here with him in the mornings yeah i'm like i remember that voice mm-hmm. so are, so are, here's are my guys. issue you guys you played great music but 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 you guys were the the reason all my mixtapes were ruined okay <laughs> <laughs> What what do you all have against the last thirty five seconds of a song? It's called posting, man. If you, post it, it. if you weren't a good DJ, you, you know, couldn't post the song. You know what really man. hurt is when you know I, I'm, I'm in my bedroom, my little recorder, and I just luck out and in time to press what play and record or record with those two buttons at the same time and I get the whole beginning of the song and I'm like yes only for it to be ruined <laughs> by someone chiming in with the Tarzan yell and, uh, you know. uh, that's when but, so, but yeah. back in the day when we used to post we didn't have anything that said how many how much time was left or anything else we just, oh, just had to know the song so you didn't do that yeah. on purpose because my husband and I thought, oh, yeah. we did it thought maybe it was a conspiracy well, oh, no, we did it on against purpose. Mixed radio, tapes. radio air time is at a premium and uh-huh. you got to cram in as many oh, words yeah. As you possibly yeah, can. Yeah. Yeah. So when you've got like a 12 second intro and maybe like a 10 second outro, 
You can cram as many words yep. as okay. you possibly yeah. can. That's cute that you think people making mixtapes in teenage years want to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Kathy, Kathy, you were awesome. No. Kathy, you and I grew up together. I know. Who just named Elementary I knew you. I'm not sure it's a mixtape. You know, something that was so cool, because yeah, Britta and I, we lived by each other. We, we grew up together in middle school. But back then, it was junior high. Yeah. 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 High. And Reese Bumper junior, junior High, they had a lip sync. And... Uh, she, with your girlfriends, you were Axl Rose because you know this. I, you had, I, what? You had, you had this long hair, and yeah, she, she had the, the long straight hair with the bandana, and they lip synced. It was I. And we won first place. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna find that picture. I have that oh picture. Oh my god! Oh yeah, we gotta post that one. I, oh yeah, yeah, I will find time. that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, it was great. It was great. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, she said, no. <laughs> I'm going to find knows it. way too much about me because we grew up together. So Maybe she should do the interview. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried this morning. Yeah. We gave it our best shot, didn't we? <laughs> yes, we did. Well, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more talking tunes. You going to stick around, John? Uh, no, I'm heading out. Uh, oh, out man, road. you're leaving already? Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. Anyway, so <laughs> bye, John. Anyway, we'll be back with more talking tunes after this. Hey, I'm too. You're too. Okay, you're good now. Okay. You're so hot. It's because I'm you're so hot. hot. You're so hot, G. Yeah, he is. He's such. G, you're I, hot, I love, man. like, to me, because Bob, like, he was good looking when we got married, but I think he turned 50 last year. I think he's, like, way hotter now yeah. than, I don't he know if that's daddy issues you are or hot. if he is hotter now, but. Uh, I'll hot. take it either way. <laughs> but just, like, but my favorite thing, I love it. Like, well, at the basketball games and football games, when, when he's broadcasting, he's got his foot up on the ledge calling the game, you know? I'm like, yeah. you're so good looking. Yeah. Like, all right, talking to you. We're back, and we're all talking about how hot Bob is. Bob, so glad you could join us. It's hard so not hot. to talk about. Too bad y'all missed it. But, I know. Uh, <laughs> so hot, Bob. Ooh, ooh we'll baby. To, Just looking. I wish this was. On, I wish this was radio right only, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might get away with it. Unfortunately, that's there to yeah. contradict what has yeah, been we said. We got cameras, man. We got cameras on. Yeah, I know. Um, Britta keeps trying to push her way out of them, but yeah, we got cameras on. Yeah, I'm like, I didn't really <laughs> Come on, Britta, get on, on over here. Get over here. Get does in the Bob crowd. make you get uncomfortable? I know. Yeah. 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 He, he does. He makes some oh. people uncomfortable. The, so the great <laughs> announcement is is that we have two new players of the Talking Tunes right here. We have, of course, the lovely Kathy. Boom, bam, Hello. bam. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like that. No, I do. I actually you do. You do be, not. Is that because of drumming like or just because I'm well, yeah. kind of blunt? And oh. <laughs> she can also be heard here on 100.9 on mornings. In the Monday mornings with Jim Cox. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think she can be heard. Yeah, she once, once in a while, while she can be heard. <laughs> she was heard this morning with Britta. We had a great time this morning with Britta. Yeah. And that's and that's our other member of Talking Tunes now that it is, is hanging around as long as she can until... Somebody smart hires her. Our new, these new people. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So, uh, and then of course Bob, he's been around forever, and G-Man forever, and myself forever. So we're just the old guys. That's oh, three forever. What does that equal? We got two beautiful women here, so that's even better, right? Yeah. That's... Actually, we got three because we got one hiding around the corner over there. Too. <laughs> the production woman. The production, production assistant. Woman, yeah. Yeah. The picture taker. <laughs> All right, so who do we want to start with first, Bob? You want to interview? You should interview Kathy. I mean, you guys are married, right? So I mean, it's it's no secret. Come on, you guys, <laughs> you no guys secret. have been together, and you know, even though you and I had this bromance, I think you two should pretty much talk about <laughs> bromance. Well, yeah. well Brendan, we kind of talked about this this morning. You know, Bob and I, we we make a great partnership. We're a team in life and marriage and raising kids, but not board games, card games, negative. Definitely not Pictionary. <laughs> yeah. Anything to do with artwork, typically, <laughs> there, there draws a dividing line. A game night, playing. Bob and I played Pictionary one time, and he, he does hold a bachelor's in art for Michigan State, which many people don't know. And uh, playing Pictionary with Bob, the timer runs out. He's still shading. He'll, he'll, draw, <laughs> he'll draw a little line, but then, like, you know, shading, and then, yeah. oh, no, erase that. <laughs> Okay, no, that's all right. And then <laughs> keep drawing. It's, yeah, there's just not enough time. For I'm a realist, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I always thought I was a good drawer until I played Pictionary. I looked at my drawing, and I'm thinking, what the hell is that? Yeah, if you don't know what you're drawing yeah. your own self, yeah, yeah. it's going to be I tough. I still remember it was a school bus. 
that's so easy to draw. I don't need tires shaded on a, on a piece of paper. And, and, Depends you know, on what neighborhood you grew up in. And or pencil what the erasing like. marks, literally. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. But no, no, I, I, I love Bob. He, he, I'm his biggest fan. He's my biggest fan. And uh, Well, let's, let's talk yeah. about your biggest let's fan talk about here. I mean, she's, like I say, yeah. I've known her since out of control. I mean, you guys have been together for how many years now? Uh, well, we, we got 27. we met in December of 1991. Yeah. Yeah. Engaged three months later. Yeah. Married a year and a half after that. Mm hmm. Oh. So you do the math. Cammy came along a year after that. 26 plus years of marriage. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. yeah I feel like we should be singing the love boat or something. Well, you know, <laughs> no, love. I mean, we, we, we you, you know, we're, not we're, no, I can't. Not this voice. <laughs> it wasn't always storybook. I mean, you know, Bob had a lot of maturing and growing to do. <laughs> there's a few, <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a few pages missing out of the you know, storybook that have yeah, been ripped away. And, I am. Yeah. If I, I always say, if I died now, he'll, he'll make a perfect husband for somebody. <laughs> it would be a shame if I died out because all of my hard work would, you know, somebody yeah, else would yeah. get to reap the and then, then Because what she you, trained him well. And what would Jim Cox do? <laughs> God. Try no. to marry Bob. <laughs> <laughs> New partner coming in. On Jim Cox has Bentley. We all are very aware of that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That yeah. Doc. Mm -hmm. yeah I've, I've known Jim for years and years and years, but uh, yeah, he's he's definitely a true radio icon. That's for oh, sure. Oh, he is. So. He is. It's, it is surreal sometimes just listening, sitting across from him in the mornings and yeah. listening to him like deja vu. I know. think it's the first thing I, I heard when I moved to, to sure. Muskegon back okay. in 83 or yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Cash call. Just think about we've been known Cox for that <laughs> long. I know, I know. Cash call. Yeah, that, I know. Yeah. So I just thought, yeah. oh my God. Radio. Cash call. The oh, These guys are like a squirrel. Oh. <laughs> 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 what were we talking about again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry. You're, you're in for And back to you, Kathy. Uh, <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying, Kathy. This, this is, is where one of those things where no, you just I jump know. in. Yeah, because more like last Friday at lunch with you guys, all the type A radio guys. Yeah. Well, I'm getting really good at now, especially, I have to do this with Jim as well. I always, I have to see him, his body language, so I know when he's gonna finish a sentence or take a breath. When he takes a <laughs> breath, I can jump in, just like Friday at lunch. I'm waiting for somebody to take a breath so I can jump in and be heard. <laughs> well, you're heard now. What, tell, tell us about the, the amazing Kathy as far as her career. When did that all start? Well, her musical career yeah. started around the same time I met her, really. I mean, she'd, already, she'd been playing drums since she was 14, so I met her a few years after that. But as far as when I first met her, she was playing with the Aquinas College yeah. big band, oh, yeah. the jazz yeah. band. That's uh, right. I've known you long... Oh, yeah. Then you we know Bob. Yeah. We yeah. go back to oh, the yeah. prickly pear. Oh, yeah, you guys. Yeah. 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 That worked there. Did you really? Worked you worked there? Squirrel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bob is the calming force for pretty much everything, yeah, yeah, every yeah, situation. Yeah. yeah. We, it was the Sunday night jam sessions. I was the hostess. Wow. Well, I already knew you because. Yeah, yeah. We've known each other since birth. <laughs> That, that, those Sunday night jam sessions were great. I mean, it, so my parents started taking me to those when I was 15, so I had only been playing drums for a year, and thank goodness for veteran, patient musicians. You, you know, it's, yeah. It is the first scary. place that I ever sung a solo song. Really? Hey, come on, Out of Control was patient with, with Greg for years. Well, I know, if, if I wouldn't have <laughs> No, they weren't patient, they were scared. Out of control. Yeah, I, 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 I made a lot of connections and really got my start in the community with Out of Control. So if Greg would have been a good drummer, I would have never had <laughs> a job. Oh, wow. Wow. Ooh, yeah, I didn't go that I deep. Can, I can see Emily laughing in the background. That, that, no. that kind of hurt my right no. there. But you know, it, it, <laughs> no offense. I'm kidding, but I don't know. Um, anyway. Not. But let's, no, let's, go back, just, let's go back a little before that. Yeah, I can. No, I think I need to explain that. The good drummer. Uh, we're no, we're going to get to that. I, I, have a, I have an opinion on that myself. <laughs> uh, but before that, King B and the Buzz Tones. Oh, yeah. That was like her first yeah. professional gig band. <gasps> my, uh, my audition for them oh, to be oh. the lead singer. Again, thank you for sucking. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Not to be the drummer. To oh. be the lead singer. Oh, really? You, you know, my first professional gig. Lead singer? Rip. Okay, I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. no, that's sorry, okay. You, Paul, why would Paul need a singer? Yeah. Did he really? Did Paul you really? All the time, didn't he? Yeah, Paul sings. Yeah. 
he, I, I never I'm knew surprised he was Paul even entertaining anybody yeah. besides himself. Yeah. Well, the thing was is that you know they thought that they would have a singer, but you know Paul, yeah. he's yeah. bigger than life. Oh yeah, <laughs> no. In his no. style, his style, the blues that Paul plays is, yeah. is totally different blues than. And I love him. I love yeah. him. Yeah. Oh, he's oh, great. Great right. guitar. So, so how long were you with King B in the Bus Tones? Oh, three years. Three. Yeah, three years. But my first, my first professional gig. Uh, with them opened up for the Marshall Tucker band. Oh, wow. I was 20. I was, yeah, no, I would just turn 21. I was 20 or 21. It was before we got married. And uh, I still remember what I was wearing. And I, I, I loved the Marshall Tucker band at that yeah, point, yeah. too. Yeah. And uh, I could have puked right before going on stage. It was the most, it was the craziest. That was when Somersault was on the other side. On they had the, the lake. little trailer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the best video I got of you is the, when you guys were at. Uh, um, Heritage Landing, uh -huh. out of control band, you were playing drums then, and that one camera guy kept going on you, <laughs> going on you real low, like going up, up shot, you know, big kind of a low cut thing I going on I love that summer, that, that was a hot summer, I remember that, yeah. I, we opened yeah. for Bonnie Ray. I still yeah. remember. Yeah. Yeah. It, was yeah. a, it was a hot summer, I, the, camera, okay. the cameraman anyway, just kept so, going. No, I just really gathered. felt good oh. that summer. <laughs> I, started, I had my white Tommy Hill figure jeans and a little Tommy. <laughs> Halter top, yeah, that was a yeah, good summer. Yeah, yeah anyway, wants it. I can sell it to you. 1995. 1995. She still has it. I still got it. Anyway, I'm sorry. Well, that was the evolution from King B and the Buzz Tone mm -hmm. to Out of Control. You know, before before that, well, this wasn't professional. Um, I was with the Lock and Side Highlanders. Do you guys remember those those guys? The the Kilts, the Scottish Drum and Pipe <laughs> Band. Remember? You no. Was yes, you. Oh, wow. Did you? Are you I, 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 my problem is I'm just I'm so old. <laughs> well, I was 14, and uh, we it was it was St. Patrick's Day, which is huge for the Lock Inside Highlanders. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. yeah so day. we went to the West Side well before Schweifler owned it, and I'm um, 14. I thought, well, look cute, my little kill. You know, I had no idea what I, I was kind of sheltered, no idea what I was walking into, and this this <laughs> this. Regular sitting at the bar gave me two dollars to buy myself a beer, <laughs> <laughs> and I was so scared. Well, that's, all you, that's all you gave you the money for, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Here, sweetheart, buy yourself a beer. <laughs> I kept that two dollars. <laughs> so technically, that was a professional gig. I guess. Yeah, yeah. You got yeah. Paid to play that day. And uh, back then, uh, uh, Tim Jones was my drum teacher, and he's the one who got, he remember offhand. He played it offhand oh, with my Mad Van Oh my gosh, and, uh, they were great. The, uh, Sax player, oh, I, it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, Perry, Glenn Perry. Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Perry. Glenn Perry, yeah. And uh, he was in that band. They were Ooh, fantastic. Uh, weren't they? They were jazz fusion, yeah. and they played on WBLV. And that was the that was the band that all musicians went to go watch. Yeah, and yeah. See I, those just, guys. I mean, wow, phenomenal musicians. It was just cool, cool music. And so Tim Jones, I, I just adore him. And. Um, yeah, he was a great drum teacher, but to take interest in young students, to get us involved in the Lock Inside Highlanders, and you know, yeah, it was just. And it's amazing because I worked with Tim Jones. Where so, did you work with him? I, everywhere where we could. Teaching? You were a student though, right? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I was a student about like two sessions, and he just said, "The hell with it." <laughs> so out of control. Out of okay. control. Where, where does that come from? How, how did that happen? <laughs> well, Jeff or Jeff Olson, um, love Jeff. He, he died a few years ago. I still I still get weepy uh, just talking about him out loud. Um, yeah, uh, but it was him and Rob that started back at the uh, Pepper Mill, uh, uh, J.P. Allen's. We were at J.P. Allen's, Pine Street like Tavern, mm -hmm. Pepper Mill. And Sparky, too, wasn't it? Sparky. Oh, no, it was it's the two of them at yeah. first. Oh, oh, no, it started out the two of them, then John joined, then I joined, and there was four of us for a while, then Dale Clark. Yeah, Dale Clark. Yeah. And, and then Dale Clark's wife hated us, yeah. and then that's how Tom Schaub ended it to the band and I loved it when Dale Clark would sit in with us though because I when I joined Tom Schaub was the keyboard player then and um but Dale would sit in and and I love Dale he's so much fun nice guy uh and he, we did uh the oh, what was that song it was the five four I switched time it's um it's, uh, moon dance moon dance, moon dance. Yeah. yeah that was that was that was his, his standby that, that was his standby yeah, and that was I loved it that was so lounge lizardy that <laughs> That, that was oh, a Bill Murray thing. Oh, yeah, it really was. Yeah, yeah. We, we did that at 
my father's funeral. Oh, really? Yeah, we were doing the visitation. Oh, Everybody oh, left. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it was like, and, hey, yeah. And yeah. so <laughs> what happened was, is I was saying that, you know, this guy I played in the band with, and my sister was going, no. So he went to the piano and started playing and singing the song, and I played the drums <laughs> yeah. beating on the piano. Wow. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, I remember when I went to interview him when we did the whole Out of Control documentary thing, and uh, he was right in, his, right in his funeral home. He had his little organ over there to, to play the songs and talk about it. He's you know. so cool. Yeah. Just, the, the amazing thing that Kathy came into is that what people don't know is is that Heritage Landing, the first band that was ever on that stage, was Out of out Control. Of was, that, was that for the fireworks? Convention? No, no, no. Okay. Way before that. Okay. Um, the first band to do Party in the Parks, because nobody would touch yeah. Party in the Parks. Yeah, we would do Party in the Parks, and then the Beach Bashers came, and Replay came, and all that kind of stuff. So the heritage of that That's was blue. great. And so it was, it was one of the things was that the band decided that, okay, Greg's drumming had got to a certain point, and we need to bring in another drummer. <laughs> hey, I'm cool with that. <laughs> And they're like saying, okay, we, but you need to play stay on percussion, which was fine with me. Yeah. And But there were some songs that they said, we need you to switch back, which was But nobody, was, was great. well, I don't know, Kathy came pretty close to bringing the fun that you could bring. Right. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You know, There's nobody can with, touch with G, G as Man, as, though, yeah. I learned a lot. Uh, but she can do those presence. moves like James Brown did. Yeah, yeah. G <laughs> Man gets a standing ovation going up on stage and taking yeah. his jacket off. I know. Okay, yeah. and, and he just had the stage presence that nobody could match. But oh, well, the one, uh, the one clip you're I, right. You're right. The, the, the one clip I have of you, and you were playing the tambourines. You were getting into it so much, and you beating on those tambourines, and it flipped up, hit Sparky right in the head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, stuff. I remember when I first. Probably went to see the band. I don't know if it was the very first gig or not, but I remember, you know, the first Greg really stood out to me. Oh yeah, yeah. Because the entertainment value was very high. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, and he did the Russian dance. Oh yeah, oh, oh, yes. It. yes. Oh, that brought wow. the crowd to their feet. I mean, <laughs> seriously, that that was the next level What's stuff. That song, uh, Imagine Me and You. What was the, the, the name of that? Song? Uh, the Turtles. Okay, yeah, that's what would go into the Russian <laughs> yeah. dance. Yeah. Wow! Yeah, and, and the sugar down. plum fairy yeah, was yeah. Yeah. mixed yeah. into yeah. that. You know, the other so, thing about Eye Control too, though, was the the idea that you brought other bands in to play or other musicians to play with Out of Control, and that that to me was awesome. That's why I, that's why I first saw Rick Hicks. I mean, you know, amazing amazing guitar player Rick Hicks, and and just so many people that came in. I'm glad you said play. that. It's funny because when I was 17, I sat in with them oh, really? at parties in the park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you guys always had the parties in the park. Because I just said, "Hey, get this girl up to play." Yeah. <clears throat> well, it, and that was that was so cool. But then Good it was job, when G. I got us to join. We, my husband, and I, we went to the. Uh, Beardsley Theater up the second gallery level. You guys were playing. Oh, you were playing on the third floor at the mm -hmm. Control Anniversary Party night before Thanksgiving, and I sat in, and uh, and I hadn't seen you guys in a, a long time. And then I could I could see what I, I was up there playing. I could see Rob Schweifler peeking around the corner. Like, Who is that? Yeah. That's not Greg. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But that was a that was a legendary. <laughs> yeah. That was a legendary party. Poor Greg. The, an on your way the anniversary, party. Party. anniversary party. They, they were like they the must-go to yeah. event in Yeah, but it was the yeah. week after that that Rob called me at work and asked me to join the band, right. and I, I I was so excited. I, I, I couldn't even stand it. It was just wow. Well, oh, talked wow. about other musicians sitting in, especially on a night like that yeah. when you yeah. get to the yeah. reunion. Yeah. All the old members of the band and then the, yeah. the other Oh, yeah. Musicians. Great thing. Yeah. You oh, took yeah. Tim Johnson's yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah, Tim, yeah. Yeah. Tim yeah. was a good drummer too. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was yeah. one of my drum teachers. He went. He, he did another band too that he was in. That Still was doing like jazz. Yeah, he, and yeah. Grand yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he's a good drummer too. Yeah. Uh, he is. So, so that's how she got in out of control. And what else? Back to you, Bob. <laughs> After that, West Side Soul Surfers. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that. Yeah, that was fun. Because uh, my my background, what I really um, learned first is my best style, I guess, is jazz big band. And uh, so that was close. so playing with the, a horn section, wow, that was cool. Well, it, yeah. Oh. Oh, Ed, Ed Spears was in there. Yeah, he Is plays he trombone. Playing? He, yeah, yeah. yeah, I worked with him at WGBO. Yeah, Danny Jacobassi. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Oh my God. Who is fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On everything. He, yeah, I mean. You know who I really, I, the drummer, I 
got to say the one that I did like was uh, um, Steve. Steve Arnold. Yeah, Steve Arnold. He, he was quite the drummer he, too. He, he was crazy, man. He was, he was Bam Bam. Yeah, he was definitely yeah. Bam Bam. He, um, he, he always played shirtless. I mean, yeah. he started out with the shirt, and, maybe and, the first and, couple songs. And without his shoes on, too. Yeah, and I play yeah. barefoot mostly, yeah. too. Yeah, that's a drummer thing, yeah, and you need your feet to be flexible. He did at the West Side uh, Soul Surfers. He did, Most uh, of the time when I play without a control, I play without pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm <laughs> That's where it was time for the crowd to leave, right? <laughs> Greg Security. Took his pants off. Security. Security. <laughs> the Russian guy, he has no pants again. Yeah. You know, going back to Greg, though, um, you know, when I was playing with King B, and, you know, I was, I was shy. Believe it or not, I, Britta and I have this same history. Uh, I was really shy as a kid. I mean, really, really shy. And, uh, so when I played with you know King B, um, I didn't I didn't know to really smile and, and project that presence from back there, you know and so yeah. and being the drummer playing in a three piece blues band can be somewhat boring. It's I mean it's good music, but we'll be honest yeah. <laughs> for a drummer, you know. And so, but Greg, the reaction from the crowd, like no, you you really need to show if you're having fun up there, you need to show it. Yeah. And and people respond to that, and it's so much fun connecting with people in the crowd. And uh, and just letting them know you're having a good time. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah, I love that. that. Too. And 14 <laughs> kids later. Uh, no, no, just kidding, just kidding, just, just, just. Kidding. That's a joke. That's a joke. My wife. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go into one of my favorite Kathy Ecker drum story moments. Yeah. Okay. Larry McRae is the headliner. Oh God, I love Larry McRae. Oh, Larry's awesome. We're, we're, He's awesome. We are yeah. huge fans. So we always, you know, we originally from it. Saginaw, but he is a yeah. national, yeah. really oh, yeah. international yeah. blues act yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. All the time. So he was coming to Chili Blues Fest in Grand Haven in the tent, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, cold outside. And Anyway, so they come down and Kathy's band was playing before. No, actually, or Vincent actually, Hayes. Vincent Hayes. Yeah. And uh, you're sitting in. So I just, you know, go up to say, hey, Vince, you know, oh, where, where have you sit in? So I wound up sitting in the last two songs, yeah. Yeah, so you're, you're sitting in there. As, as Larry and the band get there, yeah. they're coming in the back of the tent, which is where the, the drums are set up. So they're coming <laughs> yeah. in. Vince is playing his last couple tracks with Kathy on the drums. We're playing and, Ray and they, Charles they, they, they just yeah. kind of notice. They're, you know, they're walking in with their equipment and their gear, and they're, and they're just kind of looking like, who's this girl playing drums over here? And I could sense them. Like, because we've seen, he, we've seen him several times. We love yeah. Larry. And uh, I could sense that just like, oh my goodness, I'm pretty sure Larry McCree is standing right behind me and the, and the guys, so I need to step this. And Larry, Larry's brother is his drummer, right? Yeah. So they're coming in and you can see they're kind of talking back and forth and they're kind of pointing and looking. And I'm and they bring super in, cool, but I'm... Yeah, and they bring in a, more <laughs> equipment and they're just kind of coming in every three or four times they make trips into there and each time they're really like... And I'm standing in the crowd so I can watch the whole thing from behind, you know, watching what's going on and I'm thinking, oh yeah, this is cool, you know? And so you guys end up, you end up talking to them as they're... Yeah, they help you finish the up. Stage, they help yeah. you off the stage, and you guys have a little conversation. Us drummers, we always have to jump off the back of a really high stage. Don't yep. we? Uh, yeah. yeah. So then, anyway, long story short, they invite her up, but it, there's a little caveat to it. They didn't just bring her up there because oh, she's cool, All right? They they wanted to like kind of give her a test. Oh yeah, they were testing me for Larry McRae's band again, being a, a very top-notch blues band. They, they weren't yeah. just into giving anybody a, a shot on their stage with them. That's not how it works, especially with Larry and his brother. You don't go to Larry McRae shows and see other musicians on stage. You just no. don't. You just don't. No. So, so I thought, you know, yeah, they maybe said they'll get you on light or something like that, but I thought, yeah, they probably won't. You know, like a lot of bands say that just to kind of shoo you away. But they actually did call her up. And so she went up on stage to play. Yeah, and I asked him. Well, they asked yeah. me what I, what style I wanted to play, and I'm like, let's do a, let's do something funky, upbeat, funky, you know, um, no shuffles. <laughs> I hate shuffles. <laughs> uh, and so yeah, they did. They played it. We saw. So, so I thought, cool, you know, we'll we'll do they'll do a funk tune, you know, and that that was fun. And uh, so and so I don't. So typically, I don't like like the you know the the typical drum shuffle, you know. But then. Then they, I th they tested me. They wanted to see if I was a one-trick pony, you know. And thank goodness they called off a tune like a like a six-eight time kind of mm -hmm. shuffle. I'm like, oh, okay, boys. <laughs> yeah, we can do this. So luckily, it was one of the the songs that was easy to play that I could kind of you know yeah. do some cool stuff on. And uh, yeah, but but it was really cool because I mean, here's my wife up there playing with Larry McRae right. and the band, yeah. and and the, there was a huge crowd in there. Yeah, yeah. You know, at Chili Blues, it's the end yeah. of the night. It's the headliners on stage. The the tent is packed. And they're just going crazy. They're just like, who is this? And, you know, 
she's hanging with every beat and she 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 was just super impressive that night and i thought you know i was so yeah. glad she had an opportunity to do that because i know she's got the skills she's got the chops to do it and she didn't freeze under pressure she just stood up there she was again still being her normal self projecting herself smiling engaging the crowd all while keeping up with these guys <laughs> a band she's never played with before yeah so well, that's really cool play Larry and great team. I, yeah. got, I, I actually recorded a lot of Larry McRae tunes because when he did Steak and Blues. Steak and Blues. Steak and, and Blues. Uh, we, yeah. I was at GBU at the time, program director, and I, and I did the ISDN line, and we recorded them, played them, did them live. And I'd never seen Larry before, and that was the first oh, time. And he amazing. Was an act, and that was Where was that at? Where was that one at? Terribly, terribly okay, because remember had, when the Steak and Blues? Roberta Bradley. I was just, yeah, Roberta, Roberta Bradley. Yeah, oh. I was just, I was just gonna say that because we saw them at like it was like one of those clubs, yeah. like the Polish Falcon, or it was oh. one of those kind of bigger yeah. clubs. Yeah. Roberta exactly. Bradley, and that's where we first uh, heard about her. Yeah, and um, that was you know I still remember that weekend because that was the weekend Princess Di was killed. Yeah. And so then I spent the next three days on the couch <laughs> watching <laughs> that unfold. Still more in her, but yeah, but, uh, great, yeah that was a long band. time. I got I've got some of that stuff. We'll yeah. play that with this. Uh, this whole so here. now we'll just fast forward to your current, okay? Mm -hmm. If we can. So Betty Page <laughs> is the new band. It's a band you've kind of. I think you got kind of tired of other people dictating when you were going to play, where you were going to play, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, and in the, a way, the style. And so you, yeah, and the style. So you wanted to get a band where you could kind of handpick the team, Yeah, well, you know, the Tim, other band Tim members. Tim Lipan, um, just an incredible human being. I, I, Tim and I, go, we all go way back with Tim, and he's been so good to my bands over the years, you know, and uh, it was at one of the, it was a Pound Buddies thing, like once a month on Sunday at the Watermark. And so I was in that, the house band for the Pound Buddies gig. And uh, he, he was there and he, and at, he heard through the grapevine I was starting to put a new band together. And I just had myself and uh, Will, Will Rock at, yep. at that time. I, I, he didn't know I, I only have me and the keyboard player. <laughs> and so uh, he came up to me and he was then he was booking for uh, bike time when it was at the Fruitport uh, first track. And he said, uh, we need someone to open for Leonard Skinner. I heard you have a new band. Wow. Do you guys want to play? I'm like, yeah, we want to play. <laughs> So I got home that night, made a list, like, all right. And the, the first people I had, John Merchant was my, my first choice. Um, and I, if, if you've never had a chance to see or hear John Merchant, <laughs> the yeah. guy. You guys went to school together. Yeah, we, did. We, went, yeah we went to school with Fantastic John. Fantastic guy. <laughs> but, you know, I, when I hear a band, I love the energy, watching the energy on stage. And John Merchant just, he lives it. And it, he, he, you could tell he loves what he, what he does. And uh, he's played with Dutch Henry um, for years and he's had a solo act, but John was my first choice. And, um, and he said, yes. And so then I knew the rest of it was cake, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, and we, and we booked, that was our, one of our first gigs together. And yeah, not a bad, not a bad pe person to open for in your first gig either. I know. Yeah. 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 Leonard Skinner. I, you you know, and I had a new appreciation for them because, you know, the, the reputation. Mm -hmm. the, the, They're you know, older than we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, don't play Freebird, you know. Yeah. And let me tell you, those guys rock. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, a hard, oh, hard working man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, Was so. the keyboard player still living then? Or? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. Good. It was a great band, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, with the brother taking over and everything. Yeah, great band. Yep, Johnny Van Zandt was walking because we played. Yeah. We actually played Rebel Road the night before we played Bike Time, and uh, Johnny Van Zandt was walking I, by. I think my greatest memory of, of Kathy is is that she learned how to scam quickly from the, from the yeah. teacher. Uh, she Red learned Robert. how to scam quickly, and and she she would perform and put all her energy into the show, and then after the show was like, I'm so tired. <laughs> Never said and that. It was, it was like Princess, so we gave it a name, oh. Princess. Yeah, I she just so gave that nickname. I, I and so we would have to take her drums down. No, no, no. It was Sparky that gave. I it just, it I just wanted to get off the stage and start drinking again. I wasn't <laughs> tired. I could have loaded my own drums. You know, I was trying to say it nicely, but you know, no, you, no. It, but so. loaded her drums, Princess drums up all the time. Yeah, what, did, what did Tim Lipen, when he started talking about him, he used to introduce the band. What did he say? The, the pound most, for pound. Pound for pound, the <laughs> biggest band around. The most the dangerous race. band. The most <laughs> dangerous band. That was yeah. it, yeah. Uh, amongst other in introductions, yeah, yeah. that was one of the kindest. One of the, one of the ones mm -hmm. a lot, though. Tim Lipan, well, he yeah, he's done so many things. <laughs> yeah, 
Well, still he, does. He does. He still does. The reason when Santana was at uh, Heritage Landing, why they decided to, why Santana decided to go with other singers because Tim and Tom. Oh. I'm just oh. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I'm just kidding. Anyway. No. <laughs> well, we'll talk, we'll talk with Bruno. we got to take a quick take break. Take a quick break and we're then gonna, go we're gonna to. Hear, but first, before we do that, we're going to hear a little, little Larry McRae. Yes. Oh, yeah. All right. Talking Tunes. All right, Talking Tunes, we're back once again with the amazing, we're going to talk about the amazing Britta now. Oh. And, the, you know, you two have a, a kind of a love relationship going there. It's a love fest. A love fest. A I love I, fest. Yeah, I love, love Kathy. But now, Britta and, I, Britta and I both go back to the mm-hmm. Sunny FM days, way back with uh, Jojo Gerard. And uh, were you there with Biggins or no? I was not. Okay, I, was, so I was not there. I got there at the very tail end of when Jojo was there, right before he left to go east. Okay, now everybody, that Sunny FM. If anybody, and it was Sunny FM. I'm sorry, the, time. the new. It was the new <laughs> Sunny FM. Yes. For five years, it was the, it was new. the new yes. Sunny FM. Yes, I was yeah. there right at the tail end of that before they turned it into just WSNX. So, yeah. yeah, that's yeah, that's where I got my. Well, I started at Rock 101, and I was just an intern running in traffic because that was when they were doing wacky morning show bits, hmm. and. Um, Oh, who was it? Was this Gene Gregory? Gene Gregory. I remember Gene. And Mark yeah. Fury. Yeah. You remember those guys? Oh, yeah. Wow, that's a blast from the oh, yeah. name. Yeah. They were having me run around in traffic. I mean, literally running around in traffic and doing beach hits. And I was the I was the gopher in the morning. You know, yeah, literally I was, I was taking Gene. the van to get washed. And, yeah. you know, and um, I was there for about four months doing that. And then um, Bob Goodrich, who was the owner of Goodrich Broadcasting at the time, was right. uh, over there by the drive-in movie theater. Pulled me aside one morning. He's like, "Kid," in the way you know Oscar, the oh, way yeah. he talks. Yeah, he pulled me aside a few times. Oh, kid, <laughs> quite kid. a few times. Now I know you've never done your own radio show, and you're just an intern. And but, uh, uh, kid, we need you to fill in doing the midday show on Sunny FM just for a couple weeks, and that turned into over six years. Yeah. And then. Um, Did he ever send you to Lansing? No. He sent me to Lansing a couple of times after no. I had like one hour of sleep, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God he didn't make me drive all the way to Lansing, but um, right around the time, by that time I, I got married and I was expecting my first child and um, literally the week I was due to have my baby, Bob sold the Goodrich radio stations to Clear, Clear Channel. Channel. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm never going back. I'm gonna stay home. You stay home, Mom. I'm, you know, I'm gonna stay at home. That's all there is to it. This is the perfect time for me to quit. Well, the general manager um, kept calling me while I was on maternity leave, and he's like, "Come, come back, come back." I'm like, "No, I'm really gonna be a stay-at-home mom." He's like, "Bring your baby to work." <laughs> <laughs> so I did. I, I brought my baby to work, and at the time, the radio station was kind of a ghost town. I mean, there was hardly anybody working in the building. So I had a whole couple of offices to myself that I could have a little nursery set up. And my baby, actually, I gave people prizes if they could hear my daughter in the background. I'm like, if you hear my daughter cry, <laughs> call me now. If you're the eighth caller, I'll give you movie tickets. So how old is that daughter now? She is 20. Oh, my goodness. Okay. She is 20. Okay. Now, didn't Bill Marshall work with you back yes, there? Yes. And, good, good, and yeah. to this day, my daughter knows of him as Uncle Bill. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. Uncle Bill. And he called her little Wil- Wilhelmina. Because yeah. his name is Bill. You know, he called her Little Wilhelmina. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, Bill, she's going to think you're her daddy. But <laughs> she, 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 you're just Uncle Bill. You're Uncle Bill. So, yeah, she still knows of him as uh, yeah, uh, Uncle Bill. And he, she's Little Wilhelmina. And now she's off at school to be a dentist at Hope College. So <laughs> she's all grown up. But anywho, so I didn't scar her too badly by bringing her into the radio station. You know what I mean? It didn't, it didn't scar yeah. her too terribly. Well, I got to tell you real quick about bringing kids in the radio station. When I was at WKBZ, my kids were little, and they I did the overnight shift. And to entertain them, I gave them a, a ball of socks to throw up in the air to see if they'd catch some bats. So there you go. You know. <laughs> oh and I, I think I scarred them for life. But anyway. Oscar. Wow. wow. They caught a couple. It was, it was quite a big, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Not even a coloring book, nothing. Just I'm like, wow. Out. There was a, there was a time when I was at there was just a time go for the rabies <laughs> right away. There was a time when I was at MUS and I showed them the 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 candy machine. The candy wouldn't come out, so I figured a way to get it in there and get the candy out. Well, I went back on the air at MUS and I'm doing my shift and I go back to the break room where the candy machine was and they had every 
candy bar and everything out of that machine. <laughs> like, uh, anyway, I'm sorry. No, that's, hey, no, it was a great place to raise my daughter. <laughs> no. Except for me, unless, you, unless I was the dad, then you know, no. different story. Well, they would have loved you, Oscar. Yeah. But uh, no, and so from there, it just I was with the same company for all those years. They just kept changing names and owners. Yeah. And then of course, Clear Channel morphed into what we know as now as iHeart Media, iHeart Radio. Oh. The devil. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that out loud? No, Anywho. no, that was Bob. So I was with I was with the company. I mean, together with, with Goodrich, turning into Clear Channel, turning into iHeart for twenty six years. Wow! And um, my other daughter was raised in the radio station too. <laughs> so um, yeah, and I went through. I went through all the different stations: Rock one one point seven, WSNX. Now, did you ever work with Boatman? Yeah, well, he was on Rock when I was on WSNX. Okay, and oh, he, that's right. And that's he went right. to Reese Buffer too. We he all did. grew up to, we, we yeah. all lived in the same neighborhood. Yeah. So it's a small world. I mean, it truly is a really small world, but I love the boatman. Love him. Very nice guy. Up in um, Lettington. Yeah. Yes, he yeah. is. K Rock. Oh, is, oh yeah. yes, okay. he is. Yeah, so yes, he is. Yeah. Yeah. I still listen to him this morning. I actually did an interview with him. Yep, the Holiday Skating Rink. We all go way back. Yeah, that's where he started at the Hollywood Skating Rink. He used to DJ over there. Him and my sister. My sister was a DJ. We all yeah, oh, okay. I, I was so proud. We all, sister. Kathy, I, and the boatman, we all grew up in the same neighborhood, yeah. all went to the same school. I mean, it's yeah. such a small world, um, but it's kind of funny how we're all in radio now. Yeah. <laughs> Something in the water over there, I don't know. But um, yeah, so I was on Star 105.7, Star 108, Z108. Uh, Rock 101.7, WMUS. I was amazed at all the stations that would hear you on. Yeah. Well, you know? I mean, they kept changing me around. Yeah. And I think the longest stint I did was with Country. And I was on two stations at one time, right. here on the Lake yeah. Shore. I, I was there then. Yeah, yeah. I, I was at MUS the same yeah. time I was on with B93. And that stint lasted for about nine years. Yeah. So I did, a, and sometimes I get confused because you know, I have to do the midday show on B93 and then rush back to Muskegon and do the afternoon yeah. show on MUS. And I'd sometimes forget where I was yeah. and like, oh, I, oh. Did, I yeah. did that, <clears throat> yeah. excuse me, when, we with KB, when I was at KBZ, I did the uh, 10 to three or something like that. And then I did seven to midnight at the oldies. And I, half the time, I didn't know where <laughs> I, I right? was. I it's really hard. didn't. It's, you know, you're working from 10 to three, then you're working seven to midnight, and it's like, okay, it's, you know. Anyway. Right, it, yeah. it's, it, gets, it gets to be a bit too much, especially driving back and forth. Sometimes, and then I was doing a lot of concerts too. I was hosting a yeah. lot of concerts over in Grand Rapids. Everybody wanted you to introduce them. They really did. I mean, every, between everybody did. Come on. Yes, you, Bill do. Marshall, and uh, who else was it? I think just kind of you and Bill Marshall yeah, were the ones that. Bill. Bill is the best, well, though. The boat, the boat, they asked him oh, a couple yeah. times, the too. And, and Dixie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mark Dixon, country, yeah, of course. But there were a lot of shows. I mean, the country, the country has blown up. I mean, oh, really yeah. blown up. And there are concerts, like, everywhere. I mean, big artists. I mean, some of the people I could tell you I met that weren't really anybody at the time, I would blow your mind. Um, the Zag Brown Band. I yeah. busted him. He was walking his dog out in the parking lot, letting his dog go poo in the back parking lot. <laughs> and I go, hey, you can't do that. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And he walked up and he introduced his dog. And and I said, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bust you. He says, yeah, my dog has been on the tour bus too long. And I'm like, I'm Britta, you know? And he's yeah. like, I'm Zach Brown. I'm like, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be introducing you in about 10 minutes. Yeah. Wrap that dog up, put it in the trailer. You know, so, but I mean, people like that, that were just getting started who are now mega mega stars right. um little big town i mean i met really? the girls in the bathroom here at the mus studio i mean okay. we're, we're, i didn't know who they were yeah. you know dirk spentley you know wow the, the, i mean the nicest people country country music um they are the music, nicest people they are truly. very very nice down to earth and the fans as well and the fans oh, yeah. are very loyal very yeah. very loyal so but it was kind of a lot because driving back and forth to grand rapids Two or three times a day was getting to be. That's too much. A lot. Oh but yeah, I, I love my job, that, but that yeah. was a lot. Yeah. So, so we're listening to 100.9 MuskegonRadio.com, and of course, you've heard this voice going for several minutes now. But we'll reintroduce her for <laughs> oh, those sorry. of you who are just joining in on the show. Good we're, idea, Bob. Britta Cleveland <laughs> is who we're talking to. And again, I, she really needs no introduction. He's so professional. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> but well, well, I wanted to jump in here anyway because we've kind of taken Berta from the halfway point of her career to the end. But now we're going to go back to the beginning. Oh no. So we're going to we're going to talk about you, of course, being. You guys have already referenced this a couple of times, but growing up in Reese Puffer area, mm -hmm. and I know 
off air, we were talking a little bit about uh, the, some of the difficulties you had when you were growing up, which mm -hmm. really make it even more impressive to what you accomplished later in life. But let's talk a little bit about some of the struggles you had early on. Well, it all started in a cold March day in Hackley Hospital. No, no, no. I broke my mama's tailbone on the way out. And that's, a true, that's a true story, too. I broke my mama's tailbone. But, um, yeah, I had really bad hearing, uh, hearing loss. They didn't detect it until I was about four, you know, when you go in for kindergarten assessment. And uh, I had to have tubes put on my ears and once that happened oh the whole world opened up but by that time kids learned to form their words and I didn't learn squat how to speak I had every speech impediment you could possibly imagine um, my maiden name is Rodewald okay Widow Wodewald <laughs> Widow Wodewald is my name yeah I couldn't say my R's or my S's or many other things um, so I had some very intense speech therapy growing up I, and I was teased a lot in elementary school I was very, very shy, um, and uh, yeah, so I was very, very shy. So moving forward into like the junior high school days and high school days, I tried to push myself by getting involved in speech class and theater and choir, and um, yeah. Stop, 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 stop. Say, say that again, because it's important, because instead of running away from your fears, yeah. you challenged yourself. Well, you gotta keep in mind, I had four older siblings that were all overachievers that weren't gonna let me just sit in a little corner and be a, a wuss. They were they were like, oh no, uh-uh, you're not gonna get a good You're not gonna shame this family. <laughs> exactly, you're not gonna shame this family. Uh-uh, so no, I had to, no. We've worked too hard. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're gonna ruin the road to all name. Say it right, too. Woe to all. <laughs> so, Say it again. <laughs> you're gonna be a doctor, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I kind of, you know, I was kind of forced into being in, being in those things, but it was good. It was good that I had a lot of older siblings that were pushing me to get out of that shell, and um, it was good because I ended up really, really. I found my passion. I love music. Um, I love theater. I love. I'm artsy. I'm an art, I'm an art geek, to be honest with you. Um, so moving forward into high school, I mean, I really, really got into to music. Um, won some competitions. Um, one of my favorite competitions ever, and I am very proud to say to this very day, I am proudly the host of Student Showcase at the Frauenthal. Um, going on actually my, nice. my 27th year um, of hosting Student Showcase because it's so important. Because when I was in high school and I was in Showcase, it gave me the confidence to pursue a career in music. <laughs> Um, so, anywho, um, then after high school, I mean, right after high school, I hightailed it um, as far as I could go on the continental United States of America. <laughs> I love you, Mom and Dad, but come on. Um, so I moved to Southern California. I lived a little while in Los Angeles. How old were you when you moved to California? 18. I was 18. Oh, right, it was right, right after high school. That is so impressive. Okay. No, I was like, man, I got to yeah. go. Yeah. Um, so I moved to um, Southern California, and uh, I didn't have a job. I uh, wasn't going for school, which made my parents oh so happy. Um, but they luckily they gave they were, they had faith in me. Plus, I think they just wanted me to move out. <laughs> I was I was the youngest of their five yeah, kids. You weren't really planned, they, right? They, <laughs> I wasn't planned. I was the way accident. You delayed child. their plans. Actually, the sister before me was the accident child. I was the, the way way accident child. But anyway, <laughs> so, so they were like, let's empty this nest. <laughs> yes, we're ready. We're ready for parental retirement. Um, but anyway, so I moved out there and um, I got some real jobs. I mean, I was a cocktail waitress and I worked at a defense contracting firm as a receptionist um, but I kept trying to pursue music and a window opened up by the name of Roseanne Barr and this is a true story I can't make this stuff up Roseanne Barr did her infamous um, national anthem that we all oh, remember yes. at the San Diego oh, Padres game yeah don't play that no 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 no. if you can no. find it no no but the local radio station 91x I'll never forget it was a local alternative rock station did a contest to have someone come out and audition and win a contest to actually sing at the next home Padres game. And yours truly won. I don't know how in the world, but I won. Um, but that's really impressive. So you're in Southern California. Yeah. There's 70 people. The anthem is ridiculously hard to sing. Um, 
Yeah. For you. And, well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's more nerve wracking because you're in, usually well, in front of people when yeah, you're doing and you, it. Yeah, you don't want to mess up. But a good singer can't sing that properly. Well, you know, no, no, seriously. Yeah. And, uh, it was a slow day in San you, Diego. Forget the words, <laughs> or forget the words like Christina Aguilera. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. Know, yeah. yeah. It was, it, oh, I've done that before. Uh, but anyway, um, it was so that was, I don't, the, all the stars lined up for me on that. And because that opened up, because the baseball season is a really long season. Yeah. And they need a lot of national anthem singers. 81 and, home games. And they kept calling up. They're like, hey, hey, you feel like singing a game? And my roommates and I, we were broke. So of course you get free. T- I didn't get paid. Oh, you, so get, just gonna ask you get. You didn't get paid. No, okay. no, but you get free tickets to the game, yeah. and they were usually really good tickets. No hot dogs. Was no, no nachos. We got free parking nachos. and tickets. <laughs> <laughs> but that was cool because we were a bunch of we were a bunch of broke yeah. broke kids living in an apartment together, and my roommates loved it. They'd come and cheer me on, and so I started singing every couple of weeks. I'd sing at a Padres game, and then fall rolled around, and I, I this this. One touches me because I, I love Lou Rawls. You know who Lou Rawls is. Oh, yeah. You'll yes. never find me. Okay, <laughs> Lou Rawls. He is a San Diego native. Well, I don't know if he's a native, but he was living in San Diego at the time, and they would usually have Lou Rawls come and sing the national anthem on Veterans Day oh, wow. at the Chargers games, which is, the, which is a whole different ballgame. It's a whole different ballgame. Ball it's a whole different ballgame. And um, it was Veterans Day, and San Diego, as you know, is a really militarized city. I mean, big military. Okay, so Veterans Day is huge. Well, Lou Rawls was um, suffering with cancer. So they probably called a bunch of people, but they might have been out of town. So I was the last person on on their list. So they called me up and uh, asked me to sing the national anthem on Veterans Day for the San Diego Chargers and the Denver Broncos. So that that went into that went into another then I started getting noticed as the national anthem singer. So I started singing for a lot, like the, the Marine Corps annual um, 5, or not 5K, they're, they're uh, not 5K, it's the big one. What's the big one? Marathon? Okay. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't, I'm not, not an athlete. athlete. They're Marines. A bunch of Ks. Yeah. <laughs> the big one, the really big one. But I started, Don't say a bunch of Ks around me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, <No. geez. laughs> You had to go there. Okay. Oh. <laughs> No. Twenty six point two miles. That's what we meant to say. Yeah, they're Marines. They can run a lot more than five k. So twenty five k. Anyway, so I started doing a lot of military events out there, um, and so on and so forth. And I kept running into the same radio station guys. I never thought to be in radio. Okay, I, I really didn't. But I kept running into the same dudes, and they were the same original dudes that held the contest. Um, after Roseanne Barr, and they're like, "Hey, you know, why don't you come to the radio station and do some commercials for us?" And I'm like, "Yeah, especially they talk like that." <laughs> hey, everybody! <laughs> hey, and it was really fun because I wasn't getting paid. I mean, I was just coming. They were getting free, free labor for me, but I didn't care. And my roommates thought it was cool. I thought it was cool. I was getting to hang out at a radio station every once in a while. And one of my first things I had to record, and I think it's so funny. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do it re- recreate it for you, because keep in mind we lived on the Mexican border, and our and our transmitter was down in the Baja Peninsula of Mexico, so highly populated with Mexican people, and I have to sound like a Mexican <laughs> doing the top of the top of the hour call letters. I can't remember this. Ninety one X F A M A Baja California Mexico, and I just. <laughs> First, <laughs> my first thing. Here we're we're like, all on the edge of our seats. Here, like, here. here I'm this Dutch German chick from West Michigan. <laughs> Can you do that one more time? Trying to sound like a Mexican person. <laughs> do it. Do it one more time. I gotta hear this. 91 X F A M A Baja California Mexico. See. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm like, I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Donde está el baño? <laughs> <laughs> dos, dos cerveza, <laughs> taco, enchilada. You know, and I'm like going, oh my gosh, I don't even speak Spanish. I didn't even take Spanish in high school. And, and this is like running, like, I mean, you could hear it in Mexico. I mean, Mexican people were listening to this, and I'm like, this is a crying shame. They're going to know. <laughs> They're going to know. <laughs> They're going to know. The gig is up. But anyway, so I started doing just little, little cheesy little stupid things like that for the radio station. And I was bit by the bug. 
So then um, it's kind of tragic, but not because my dad is still alive and kicking. I love my dad. My dad got really, really sick. Um, he was diagnosed with colon cancer. By the, way. By the way, this is my little public service announcement. Make sure to get your regular colonoscopies because he just went in for his regular colonoscopy thought and thinking everything was fine. Full blown cancer. Mm. It had spread all over his body. They gave him less than three months to live. And um, yeah, I hightailed it back he, to he's Michigan. He's still around. But yes. still alive. But the Lord. Uh -huh. <laughs> but the Lord. But my dad, Bill, is still around. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. But I tell, you know, I tell people that story because it's true. It that's what got you back to Michigan. That's what got me back to Michigan. That's what got me back to Michigan. I got my, I mean, I, I had to get a job right away. So I started working at the Omni Fitness Club yeah, here in Muskegon. I remember that. Yeah, I started working there. But then. Not, not that I ever went there. I just remember. <laughs> I was going to question that. But. <laughs> well, I think I got my hair cut there once. They did. They had a really good salon there. Yeah. 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 Well, I started working there just because I had to pay the bills. and um, But then. A couple of the guys that worked at the radio station. I don't know if you remember Chris Duffy. Do you remember Chris Duffy? Oh my goodness! Chris. Yes. Chris Duffy. Wow. He got me. He said, "You know what?" Because he'd come to the fitness club to work out, and he and I were talking. I'm like, "Boy, you know, I miss. You know, I, I, I told him the few little things I did, and he's like, "You know, we could use an intern over there at the radio station. Why don't you come on by one day?" Sounds, and I, sounds familiar. Don't look back. We could use some free labor. Come on <laughs> over. I did, no, I did, and I, I stopped in. And they hired me right on the spot. I think I made like something like three three dollars and fifty cents an hour yeah. to run in traffic with Gene Gregory and Mark. Well, they were back in the studio, and I was running around in traffic. <laughs> and the rest is history. I literally they hired me as an intern. Uh, most of my duties were washing the station vehicles and handing out bumper stickers. Wow. I mean, literally. That's and and on the weekends, I never got to speak on the air other than the running in traffic junk. But I was running the syndicated stuff on the weekends with the reel to reel machine. I just had to make sure the reel to reel was queued up. Yeah. And um, that's when Bob Goodrich, four months later, gave me this speech that I gave you earlier. So yeah. that brings yeah. us all up there to speed. There we are. Yeah. We're all up to speed. <laughs> Bob was a very unique character. Yes, you he did was. him pretty well. <laughs> it was pretty good. Yeah. I, you know what? Either you loved him or you didn't love him. And I loved Bob. I Bill Marshall loved him. Yeah. I loved Bob. So here's yeah. a question. What yep. brings a same woman like you to a crazy club like this? What? What does? This is like the funnest thing ever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. When, when, Ka when, Kathy, when Kathy said, hey, do you feel like hanging out with us a little bit? I'm like, are you kidding? <laughs> are you kidding? Britta loves working for free. I would free. be at home doing it. I would be. I do, honestly. She proves it every it's day. Either, it's, you know what? I would have been home folding laundry tonight, you guys, doing yeah. doing dishes and folding laundry. It's hard not to smile around. Right? So luckily, it's your she lucky did, day. She brought his laundry with him, by the way. So, you know, if you want to. We'll make laundry. sure we bring our laundry everywhere. <laughs> hey. So you'll feel at home. I, I don't mind. Home. I do not mind. But you know what? I got to tell you, honestly, when Kathy was chatting this up and he's he I'm sorry girl she was saying all the he's that are gonna be here and I'm like oh my gosh I love every single one of these guys I love every single one of these guys and I'm like how much fun to hang out with all these guys that I just love mm -hmm. and just have some fun and laugh and I just be yeah you're silly, a perfect you know? fit and in your comedic chops you oh, know yeah. oh, whatever Ever. chops Always. you were excited when I said Bob's going to have some improv stuff for us which so, is so mark me, it mark it on your calendar <laughs> this is talking tunes Reboot show number three when she said she loved us all right. and she couldn't wait to yeah remember that and I we're do. gonna record that and play it back if it ever it goes yeah. goes sideways on. I just want her to say our ID in Mexican again. So I, <laughs> I gotta figure no, it out. We can't say Mexican. We have to say this. I, 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 I don't think that's yeah. I just yeah. said the Mexican Literally because correct, we're on the yeah. Mexican border. Yeah. And there were a lot of people from Mexico yeah. living where this was being heard, <laughs> and they're like, "Ooh, this girl, this, well, see, that's this why chica is it from around here." <laughs> it wouldn't have worked for me because remember Bob Bolton back at the oldies and Eagles days, he had a, there was a, one of the stations they had was in Arizona, but was on the border of Mexico, right on the border there, and uh, he wanted me to be the program director, or general manager over there, and he wanted me to go over there, and I said. 
And it's like, well, they're having a little trouble with the drug running across the border, but uh, <laughs> you'll be fine. I had young kids then. It's like, you probably nah, I think I'll pass. Too, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you wanted to commute? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll Drive pass. back and forth each day to your shift. <laughs> <laughs> they're having a little trouble there, but uh, yeah, they have. My, and then Terry was telling me, my wife was telling me that, yeah, they had underground tunnels and stuff oh, going yeah. through there. And it's oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I'll pass on that oh, job. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. Great yeah. job. No. You'll chop it with him. <laughs> <laughs> well you know what this was back in the day when i lived there it was nothing to cross the border i mean yeah. literally you didn't even have to show your id i mean literally you had to walk a bunch you had to walk or you could drive but you could just easy spy walk back and forth and yeah. boy believe me as my young roommates and i did because we weren't of legal drinking age of united states standards of course over in mexico they don't care you know as long as you're, you look like you're over as long as you got 16, the money. <laughs> I have money. Yeah, and, you know, so our, my roommates and I would, you know, make a frequent little trip down to Tijuana. Yeah. I can't even say that right. Tijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a cat. Tijuana. <laughs> 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 hairball, hairball. Hairball. <laughs> so, okay, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a quick break. I think there's there's more of that story of for Britta though too. I think there's more to come. But hey, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more talking tunes. Talking tunes, and we're here with Mr. Greg Roberts, who is going to do the top ten list. Okay, please note that um, I wrote this up in, in three minutes, okay? Were you on pink colors? Okay, it's time. It, <laughs> always on pink colors. I see colors. thing on his back, uh, yeah. It is time for You're Too Old. Okay, are we ready? Yeah. If you think Instagram is a breakfast cereal, <laughs> you're too old. Okay, before you, before you complain about your parents' music and now you listen to your parents' music because you don't understand any of this garbage that is out. You're too old. I'm not even sure I understood what you just said. If you said. spend 75% of your time watching politics and complaining, Kathy, you're too old. That was number eight if you're scoring at home. <laughs> number four, if you think the show 48 Hours is about a show about between the next time you have to poo, you are too old. Number five, if you think that a selfie is what you get looking at the computer at night. You're too old. Number six, if you record the ball dropping at, on New Year's Eve and you went to bed before 12 and then watched it the next day, you're too old. If you go through all your children's Facebook posts like a CSI agent or forensics officer, you're too old. Number eight, if you're wondering why Taylor Swift is got woman of the year or better yet who music Taylor Swift you're too old number nine for men man if your thumb is now larger than your dinky do you're too old and number ten women if your bra size grew because of gravity you're too old and that is the top ten and that's the way I can see it can I have some it. of your painkillers please <laughs> <laughs> Hey, wait, we're gonna no, wait. Hey, now, came in here worried about you. She wasn't sure if you were gonna make it. You know that? Hey, I wrote that in three minutes. Now, come on, that ain't we that, that's not bad. Yeah, Bobby, yeah. I, I would have guessed two, but <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna think you wrote it in two. <laughs> um, Let's take another break. Okay, break time. Let's take another break. Talking to him. <laughs> Talking to us. We're back, and Mr. Bob, you have something special for us today. That's right. Uh, this week on Talking Tunes, we're going to have a little trivia, celebrity trivia. So now we've got Emily Roberts has joined us, Greg Roberts, Britta Cleveland, and Oscar Osbo, of course, sitting behind the turntables and the <laughs> new. Uh, <laughs> He's behind the ones and twos. You know, we're just we're just pretending there's still turntables in, in our world today. Yeah, we barely have speakers. So the way this is going to work, the four of you are competing against each other. I'm going to have six facts about this celebrity. And after each fact I name, if you guys want to pull a guess out there, you can just say stop, and then you put your guess in. If okay. you're wrong, you just you're done for that for that particular for that, round for that, that, for that fact. You have to wait for the next fact to come out. 
So at this point in time, we have no money. We have no prizes. <laughs> uh, but, there, but there may be punishments. Wait a minute. Some things we, never we, we can't afford punishments some here. Some things never change. <laughs> so the first fact is I was born August 9th, 1963 in Newark, New Jersey. Um, you gotta Bruce say, Springsteen. You got to say stop first. Oh, stop. Oscar. Bruce Springsteen. Eh. All right. I'm out. No other guesses. So you're still in it, though. Oh. I began singing in church as a child. Stop. John Bon Jovi? Wrong. Ugh. Nice try, Britta. Third fact. I became the first woman of color to appear on the cover of Seventeen magazine. Whitney Houston? We have a winner. Woo! Now, wait a minute. She didn't say stop. Didn't say she did. Oh, she she did. was off she the was mic. Like she was quiet. At the time. Oh, okay. she, she did like Mary. Emily Roberts. Stop. 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 So that was our third stop. clue. Stop. Please stop. The, the three that were after that were <laughs> she signed with Arista Records. Okay. And at age 19, uh, her first two albums both reached number one on the Billboard charts. And she is the only artist to have seven consecutive number one singles on the U.S. Billboard yeah. Top 100 yeah. chart. Yeah. But could not I dance for the lick. Yeah. So Emily Roberts is our first winner of our celebrity yeah. trivia. Congratulations. Yeah, she now, when you said, you said she was born in 61. I mean, I don't know 63. why. You know, 63. In Newark, New Jersey. I not say why All right. I said Bruce Springsteen. But Round two. Okay. okay. Round two. All right. I was born May 9th, 1949, in the Bronx, New York. What year? May 9th, 1949. Um, Neil Diamond? Incorrect. <laughs> I dropped out of high school to pursue a music career. One more time. I dropped out of high school to pursue a music career. Stop. John Cougar Mellon. It's a great guess, but you're wrong. That's way long. Yeah. My first two bands were The Hassles and Attila. Wow. I'm pretty good with music, but I'm this is stumping me, man. You're good. And we're, not, we're playing along at home, too, I'm sure. So yeah. they're probably yelling at the radio right now. Probably. Those guys are dumb. <laughs> Clue number four for this individual. I released 13 studio albums with over 150 million records sold worldwide. Wow. Hmm. 49, 1949. He's from New York. Or the Bronx. The Bronx. With this, with this, stop. Frank Sinatra. Incorrect. No. <laughs> Clue number five. Oh, 49, that wouldn't work. My breakthrough album released in 1977 was called The Stranger. Stewart? From the back row, incorrect. <laughs> the He's from England. Oh, oh, he's in England. I missed that. <laughs> no. I said Greg Sinatra in 49, and he was born in, like, what, 23 or something? We've only got one clue left, and there's probably people out there dying right now I that know, you guys right? don't know this. Right? My first marriage was to Elizabeth Weber Small. But my second marriage was to a supermodel, which lasted nine years and produced oh, daughter Alexa Ray. Yeah. Billy Joel. Correct. Oh, oh. 49. 49. 49. Yeah, I, I don't know what the heck I was thinking was with a, Frank, but yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> and we will keep a cumulative scoreboard. So, Emily Roberts has won. Oscar Osbo has won. We'll do this again next week on Talking Tunes. Oh, okay. We're, we're done already? We're done with that. Come on, man. man. Really? You got us all You got to leave them wanting more. That's right. <laughs> You gotta keep tuning into Talking Tunes to get more stuff hey, like this. If you don't write in more, more, you get top ten lists from me. That's right. We're taking a break on Talking <laughs> Tunes. One hundred point nine FM WFFR and online at MuskegonRadio.com. We're back with more in just a moment. 